Hey everyone, this is Blake, the Grizzle Musician, and I finally went native on the M1 Mac Mini. So I've had a few people ask for updates on my previous video that I did on the M1 Mac Mini about six months ago, which has done really well. Thank you so much for watching. I'm glad that it was helpful and that you all enjoyed it. But I've had some people ask for an update on, you know, where I am with it and how I've got along with this particular machine. And I'm at a point now where I feel like I can kind of give that update. I've had a chance to do several different things with it. Uh, for instance, I finished a project that I had started on an Intel machine. So I was able to finish one from a previous generation Mac. Uh, I set up a new orchestral template. So I've had a chance to, you know, go through and set up several different plugins uh, all at once. And then I've also, using that template, I've begun working on some new projects. So I'm at a point now where I think maybe I can give a little bit of an update, um, talk about the transition between, you know, having to run on Rosetta and then now running natively. You know, how did that transition work? And so let's get into it. So the first thing that I would say is actually regarding Rosetta, and that would be if you're coming from an Intel Mac, I found no real difference between working on an Intel Mac and working on an M1 Mac with Rosetta. The only difference that I can say that I saw, and you can actually see this in my original video, was East-West Play uh, tended to load a little bit slower, and some other plugins may have had the same issue, and I just didn't notice it as much, but... That was really the only difference that I can say that I, you know, found. As far as Rosetta goes, it was a really good experience, but you are losing a little bit of the performance from the M1. So that's just something to keep in mind. Another thing that I've noticed, and I can go ahead and go over to Logic here. Now, this is something that I wasn't aware of when I started working with the M1 Mac computers and Logic, and maybe some of you are similar. I was under the impression that if you had a plugin that wasn't compatible with M1, you had to run Logic in Rosetta. Like, you had no choice. It turns out that's not the case. Uh, and I should mention I'm running Logic 10.7, and this is on uh, Mac OS Monterey. Logic can actually run non-M1 plugins within itself in a compatibility mode. So you don't have to run Logic overall as Rosetta. So what I ran into when I first set this machine up in that previous video was when I tried to open East-West Play, it wouldn't load the instruments properly unless I ran Logic in Rosetta mode. So some plugins, they have to have Logic running in Rosetta. Some of them won't even work in this compatibility mode. I believe now, I don't know if it was a Logic update or if I downloaded an East-West update, I think... Play actually will work properly now if you needed it to. But in my experience, I've loaded some old projects and it, it tends to crash. So it doesn't really work that well, I would say. Um, so that's something to be in my, keep in mind. But it, it does open properly now. So, uh, or at least it seems to but I don't really use it very much anymore. But some instances of some plugins that I'm currently using that are not M1 compatible, but actually still work are a couple of the reverb plugins that I'm using. I'm using the Lexicon Random Hall uh, or even the normal hall, but the Lexicon PCM native plugins. The chamber version doesn't appear to be uh, Logic lists it as not supported i think the chamber yeah see it it fails validation even if i reset and scan it again um it, it fails validation for whatever reason if i manually check use it loads fine but then i get an error message every time i start logic so i just leave it off because i don't really use it but all the rest of them work uh lexicon on their forum they've said that they're going to be supporting m1 eventually we'll see that is one that works fine. East-West Spaces is another one that's not M1 compatible or supported, but it runs just fine. So I haven't had any issues with this one at all. It runs perfectly fine. Some of them will act a little bit weird. Like for instance, uh, I've used the SSL native bus compressor before, and I've noticed in some cases it'll 
kind of spike CPU usage. It'll sit around 50% for the entire time that it's loaded. And you can't, like, like that. So, I think if I, like, for instance, if I... Oh, it went back down. Okay. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. So, that's just something to be aware of. It uh, pre Earlier today, it was sitting at 50%, and I'm, it, the only way to keep it from doing that, even when nothing was playing, was to turn it off. So, in that case, I've sort of... I just took it off, and I... I swapped over to using the, the Logic compressor just for now because I'm going to replace it when I mix this anyway. So you kind of just have to go on a plug-in by plug-in basis to see if it loads and works, use it. it. I mean, unless you notice any issues with it, I'd use it. For instance, this is the, I don't remember which version of the Waves uh, SSL compressor this is. I think it's like version 10. Um, I don't even think it was supported on Big Sur and I'm on Monterey and it still works. So I'm just keeping it going for now. Now I want to talk about the performance a little bit. Uh, I was really impressed in my initial video with the performance, even on just Rosetta mode, like running in Rosetta. Running in Rosetta mode is about 25% slower than running natively, depending on the workload, obviously. So when you go native, you're getting about a 25% boost in performance, theoretically. So I think probably the best way for me to illustrate performance is just to bring up the activity monitor CPU history graph and the CPU usage graph uh, and just show it while I play a track. If you're interested in temperatures, you can see right up here, I have max fan control running. It shows the temperature of the CPU. This thing runs super cool, always has. Much cooler than the solar generator MacBook Pro that I used to use, which is nice. Okay, I'll put CPU, I'll put the activity monitor here, so you can kind of just see how that works. And so this is how the CPU kind of handles running a normal track. So a couple of things that you may have noticed in there. Uh, first off, um, somewhere halfway through Logic Pro, the process started taking up some of the CPU. I don't know if that's it auto-saving or what it's doing something in the background. Uh, it gets handed off mostly to the efficiency cores, as you can see. That's kind of what they're for. Uh, the four performance cores are handling the audio processing, though. So that's why most it should be unaffected. Uh, there were a few things uh, you probably heard one of the violins during the 
when the violins came in, there was a bit of a hiccup there. Uh, it recovered just fine. And then at the end, there was a bit of a pop. Now, that is more than likely because I am currently running at a 32 sample buffer size. <laughs> and I will say that I've been doing some testing and I have played through this entire track multiple times with absolutely no issues at all at 32 samples. That's a bit extreme. I mean, I've been working at 256 for the longest time because on my old Intel Max, even going to 128 would cause me issues. So the fact that 32 works fine for the most part with only minor hiccups there, here and there, pretty impressive, I have to say. Uh, from the memory point of view, uh, since that, I know I had some people ask about that. The memory is currently sitting at I'm currently sitting about 14 gigs. Let me move these so we can see. The way that Logic does the audio unit plug-in hosting now is they have different processes for each. So the Logic Pro process is separate from the plug-in hosting. So we have the AU hosting service. This is the plugins that are actually M1 compatible. So any of the ones that are made to support the M1 will be hosted here. This is the compatibility version. And so this is the sort of Rosetta plugin hosting container right here. And so this is going to have those reverbs that are not compatible among, you know, a couple of other things that I have running that are not compatible. So that's where those live. This is where the main bulk of my plugins are. And as you can see, it's using 13.5 gigs. This one is using almost two and logic itself is using almost a gig. And that's not even counting everything else that's currently running on the machine. So we're really approaching that 16 gigabyte maximum for this machine. I mean, we've already, you know, written some data to the swap file. I don't notice any issues really with, you know, approaching the maximum memory usage it seems to handle it really well i've had some people ask you know is the eight gigabyte version enough i don't think so not for stuff like this it might be enough if you are doing just straight audio work where you're mostly reading from audio files not generating the sound from you know samples that are loaded into memory or you might be able to get by with it if you're using mostly synthesizers that are generating the sound that's putting more load on the cpu rather than the memory you might be able to go with an eight gig version then, but if you're doing anything that requires reading a bunch of samples from memory, you're gonna want the 16 gig. And I'm glad that I got that and I'm already kind of approaching its limit. So if you're going to need to use, you know, a lot of instruments, even 16 might at some point not be enough. I know people say that memory on the M1 is a bit different than I've heard people say that it's different than normal Intel machines and it kind of is in that it's more efficient at how it uses the memory, but it's still a finite resource. It's not magic. <laughs> you will run out eventually and then it has no choice but to go to the swap file and that is slower. Maybe the SSD on this is a bit faster so it can kind of pick up, you know, where other machines may have issues. The swap may be faster on this one, but still it's it's memory and you're going to run out of it so 16 is really what i would go for if you're going for orchestral music if you're going for other things you might be able to get by with eight but i wouldn't want to try it while using it i have every from time to time like we had some slight issues during that playback toward the end i've had some issues with some system overloads i don't think you can get away with that i don't think the m1 is going to fix that I, i've had that ever since i started using logic every now and then you'll just get some system overloads and you'll play the same part again and it'll work fine that's just i think the nature of of you know doing this type of stuff where every now and then something will just go wrong at the right point and it has to you know crash or, or fail to play back so I have had some system overloads. I don't think any of it has been from actually overloading, you know, trying to play back too many things. I think it's just been random things will go wrong while I'm trying to play back. 
never really had any issue going and replaying the same part and it not working for a second time. So another thing that I want to mention was actually brought up on my previous video. And it's something that I've seen other people say online and in different videos say to go in and do this. If you go into the audio preferences, there's an option here for processing threads and it's set to automatic. And if you go and look at Logic's CPU monitor, you'll see here that it only has four processing threads. Now, if you are aware of how the M1 is sort of architected, you would probably look at that and say, well, where's the four other cores? It's an eight core CPU, right? So the way that the M1 is architected for those that don't know is, and if I bring the CPU history graph down, you can see there are eight cores, but they're different. There's four performance cores and there's four efficiency cores. The performance cores, they codenamed them Firestorm. The efficiency cores, they codenamed them Ice Storm. So the idea being that the efficiency cores can run in the background and handle, you know, spotlight, uh, indexing, things like that, stuff that doesn't need to be run 100% in the foreground and, and can handle some latency. The performance cores are for things like processing audio and processing video and things like that. So in the automatic mode of Logic, they have decided, they being the developers of Logic, to only allow the audio portion of processing to be done on the performance cores. The idea being that those are the faster cores and those are what you want to handle the processing. I believe that when people say to change it to eight, they're sort of thinking, well, you just have more cores at your disposal. I had some issues doing that when I was running it in Rosetta mode, which adds an extra layer to this. So I actually had worse performance when I did that. I, my theory behind that is it was handing certain plugins off to the efficiency cores, which were not fast enough to actually process the audio. And so I ended up actually having worse performance. I've done some testing after doing the M1 kind of transition. It seems to work fine both ways. I don't really see a reason to just automatically up it just because. But you can certainly mess around with it, see if it works better for you in one way or another. Personally, I leave it on automatic. I don't have any issues running it that way. So that's just me. So thank you very much for watching. I hope it was helpful and that it might have answered some questions you may have had. If not, uh, put whatever question you might have in the comments and I'll help in whatever way I can. If you like content like this, consider subscribing. And again, thanks for watching. Bye for now.